I think if you ever want to know about human nature, you have to look at children. And one of the things I've noticed about us as humans is that we tend to isolate and separate each other. And this is most evident in the American game called Tag. Everyone knows this game if you were raised here. Um, you have one kid who's designated as it. And all the other kids run away from the it person, um, hoping not to be touched by that person, because then you would be it, and then people would run away from you as well. It's interesting, though, because this is just not a game in America. It's all around the world. It's in Madagascar, it's in Britain. Um, Simon Bronner explains in um, his book, Explaining Traditions, Folk, Behavior, and Modern Culture, that the game actually arose in Britain due to the fear of polio. And in Britain, they call the game Lurgy. Um, more specifically, in Middlesex, they call the game Fever. But in Manchester, they call the game Poo. Which, if you're the last person to be touched, you are the one who smells. So you don't want to be designated that person. Now, this kind of exemplifies our tendency to run away from those we deem unclean. We have a tendency to isolate someone we don't want to be associated with. And in the Old Testament, we see this example. The lepers were associated with death, and they were thought to be punished by a deity. And this separation is even, is even illustrated in St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Now, in this second reading, in the context of it, there was this big debate in Corinth, and it was over eating the food that was sacrificed to the pagan gods. So you had two parties in this debate. One was those who wanted to partake in this rite. They wanted to go to the temple and partake in the celebration and eat the food that they were entitled to have. The second party was saying, how could you eat food that was sacrificed to pagan gods? That's not right. We don't believe in those people. Those are demons. Paul intercedes and says that Food is neutral. Food does not bring you closer to God. Food does not take you away from God. However, he says that those who feel entitled to getting this meat have to give up that right in order to not scandalize those who are easily influenced. So if you wanted to go and get some meat, but there was another brother or sister who would see that and feel scandalized and think you're being unfaithful to your Christian faith, you ought to abstain from eating the meat. However, we need to exercise this sense of charity. Overall, because overall the people's sense of entitlement, holding on to what they thought was their right, was thought to be scandalous. Brothers, our sense of entitlement can be seen as scandalous. <clears throat> and it's so easy for us as religious to feel like we have different rights. We get coddled in many things within our Christian community. For instance, when I go into the Basilica, I met with plenty of hellos, polite looks. Um, how are you doing today, brother? Oh, how are you doing today? Oh, isn't it a wonderful day, brother? Um, and I get offered a lot of stuff. People keep buying me things or asking me um, what I want. And they just want to treat me out all the time. Brother, let me buy you this. Father, let me buy you that. And it can give us a sense that we deserve things, that we're entitled to a certain kind of treatment from these people. But juxtapose, juxtapose that with when I walk the streets of New York City in my habit. And people are looking at me like I'm some kind of guy from the Star Wars convention, you know? Or if I'm going, one time I was boarding a flight with my sister, and I got weird looks um, during security, and one of the security agents stopped my sister, and she was like, what is he? What is that? <laughs> and then she explained the whole fryer thing. But looking at that, there is two realities that we're living in. One where, in a way, I'm coddled, and the other where I'm sort of a leper. I'm the one that people look at weirdly and run away from sometimes. Now, I'm not saying we should minister to the people in our Catholic community. They definitely need ministering to. However, 
There's a sense that we have to give up the right of being in our Catholic community and stepping out of that in order to evangelize more people. Because brothers, there's another reality out there, the one where we are the lepers. If you ever talk to someone else who's not familiar with the Catholic Church or, um, or who's a fallen away Catholic, we're not the heroes anymore. Before, we were the ones who built the hospitals, we were the ones who ran the schools, we were the ones that ran the shelters, and that would bring people to church because they saw the goodness in us. But a lot of people don't feel like they need us anymore. There are plenty of institutions run by secular people that do the same work, and more or less sometimes they're doing incredible, incredible work. So they don't need us anymore, or they don't feel like they need us anymore. Even more so, people feel repelled by us. They look at a religious, they look at a priest, they think, we are the hypocrites, we are the thieves, and we are the abusers, and we are the lepers. We are the ones that people scream, unclean, unclean, and when we wear our habits outside of our Catholic community, that is a sore, a sore of the leper. So what this brings me to is that, brothers, we need to be healed. We need to be healed first before we can heal others. The Gospel says this today, but first we need to practice self-awareness. Because in self-awareness, we realize how our everyday actions are so laced with self-interest. A lot of the things we say we do is either to please other people so that they could like us, or so that we could get satisfaction immediately. And we need to be honest with ourselves. What is our reigning motive when we're doing something? What is our reigning motive when we help somebody else? What is our reigning motive when we give a compliment to another person? Also, self-awareness shows how weak we are. And when we realize how weak we are, we realize how much we need God. Which brings me to the second thing. We need to go to confession periodically. <laughs> um, and especially with someone we trust. Recognizing that we are a leper comes from telling the same priest over and over again that we're committing the same sin. Over and over again. Telling him our most embarrassing thoughts and our most shameful thoughts and showing him every single blemish, every single sore that we have. We need to go to our confessors begging and kneeling, like the leper in the story. Turn to the Lord in time of trouble, and he will fill us with the joy of salvation. So overall, our cleanliness will win back the trust of the people, not just the people within our Catholic community, but the people outside. A wider trust actually starts from building trust within those who we're most close with. When we have the trust of those of our friends and family, they will be like the healed man in the Gospel, telling everyone else about it. I'd like to close with a story. Um, my friend's father passed away, and I was very fortunate enough to go to the funeral. And at the funeral, I could tell that a lot of the people there haven't been to a church in many years. Uh, mostly because during communion, people were fumbling and didn't know what to do. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, this is the crowd that I'm with right now. <laughs> and at the reception, I would get a lot of apprehensive looks, a lot of cautious stares, um, a lot of just uneasiness, I felt. But my friend was so ecstatic that I was there. She was so happy to introduce me to all of her other families, family members. And um, I remember that she would introduce me to every single person. And when I went out to shake, my hand, shake their hand, they seemed a little hesitant. They didn't want to touch me. And then my friend said, don't worry. He's one of the good ones. He's one of the good ones. Brothers, we need to practice giving up the rights that we have within this Catholic community. The politeness we get, the entitlement that we, the special treatment that we get here, 
And we also need to make ourselves clean. Because there's a whole other reality out there, there's a whole other world out there that needs to know Jesus, that needs to know how much he brings us peace. And brothers, that starts with building trust with other people first, the people that we're most close with. Because we don't want to be separated from these people anymore. We want to be with them. And we want to be thought of as one of the good ones.